My name's Jonathan Ellis. I'm a lecturer in conservation genetics and I'm the principal investigator on the project. Fungi make many interesting chemical compounds and those have been screened before and many of them have uh, beneficial purposes. So for example, ergot fungus, which is the fungus that LSD was isolated from, produces compounds that can be used in obstetrics because they aid in muscle contraction and present, prevent blood flow. Fungi produce compounds that are used as immunosuppressants and obviously there's a wide diversity of antibacterial compounds that have been isolated from fungi as well. And although that work has been done to screen fungi for the chemical diversity and to get practical and applied uses out of fungi, it's relatively less well studied why these compounds have evolved in nature and uh, what their natural function is. And uh, that's an interesting question. And it's especially interesting because many fungi produce compounds that are like animal neurotransmitters. And just why fungi have evolved animal neurotransmitter-like compounds isn't uh, very well understood. And that's like a, a very interesting question to ask. I'm Kirsty Matthews-Nicholas and I'm the postdoctoral researcher on this project. So psilocybin is the main compound found in hallucinogenic so-called magic mushroom species. So there are over 200 species of magic mushrooms. Um, the most potent of these belong to the genus psilocybe. So there are 144 species of these and they occur on all continents except Antarctica. So there's been huge research into this compound for its potential use as a therapeutic drug to treat depression and mood disorders. However, we don't actually know what the role that psilocybin plays in nature. And so this is what we're trying to elucidate in this project. So what people have speculated is that mushrooms evolved to become hallucinogenic to act as an insect defence, so they're less likely to be fed upon by insects if they're reducing the psilocybin in the compound. Our project is made up of five working packages, so this includes field work, laboratory work, and microbial work, and then right through to the analysis stage. So what we aim to do is really tell this full story of how this compound may have evolved in nature. So what we've done already is we've done our field sampling season, so we did that of October 2021. And here we sampled hallucinogenic and non-hallucinogenic species on Dartmoor. Um, so our hallucinogenic species was Psilocybe semilanceata, so this is our main species of magic mushroom that grows in the UK. And the aim of this actual field campaign is to see if there's a different invertebrate community associated with magic versus non-magic uh, mushrooms. To address some of our research questions, we plan to employ CRISPR-Cas9 technology. And CRISPR-Cas9 technology is, is very powerful gene editing technology that allows for very efficient genome manipulation that can be performed very quickly and in a cost-effective manner. If psychedelic compounds evolve as a resistant trait in nature, we should see fewer insects in hallucinogenic mushroom species. Additionally, fungal mutants generated um, via this technology will, will enable us to look for, further in, into the significance of psychedelic compounds in, in mushroom, as well as enable us to study further development, growth and morphology of the fungus. I think we can use this to actually stimulate the curiosity of not only research but also the public and to get them to answer questions such as how and why these compounds are produced and why they're important in the natural world as opposed to just understanding how we can use and apply these drugs further down the line. I think asking questions about the biological world is like a fundamental part of our human nature. I think humans are always going out and look around about them at the landscape and the plants and the animals and the fungi and our project fits into like a long narrative of evolution research asking questions about biodiversity and its evolution. I hope the project will help change public perception about magic mushrooms. Uh, they're uh, interesting organisms. It's an eye-catching study system that we're uh, researching and I think it's a good way of getting public interest in evolutionary biology research and the use of genetic methods to study fungi and all of those things could deserve more attention I think.